We've done some work on planters in the past, but I want to show you one of my favorite styles of planter, and that's the strawberry jar. It's basically a planter with some slots cut in the side, and you open them up with your finger to make pockets so that you can plant not just in the center of the planter, but also around the sides to make a really attractive presentation. Obviously, they work great for strawberry plants because uh, all the little pups come out and you can sort of guide them into the new um, the new little pockets, but I like them a lot for succulents and um, for me that works better. Uh, they do have a lot of surface area so they tend to dry out really well uh, and that tends to be better for succulents than um, water loving plants like strawberries. So whatever you're going to plant in it, let's learn how to make one. It's, a, it's just a fun, fun thing to do and you can apply the same cutting and opening technique to other types of pieces as well. I've got maybe seven pounds of clay here, so I'll make a nice uh, modest size one, not like the folk potters up in North Georgia that make the five gallon strawberry jars. This is gonna be more of a gallon, a gallon and a half or something, but let's go ahead and slap it on center. I do like to throw these on a bat. Um, they can be picked up straight off the wheel, but because they've got those pockets the sides are a little bit more prone to warping and moving around, so my strong preference is to throw them on a bat. All right, let's center up. And as with a lot of planters, I like to open all the way to the wheel in the middle. Go ahead and make the main drain hole. It's also a good way of knowing what the bottom thickness is aside from that hole, so you can see it. I don't want a base to be too wide because I like them to have a really nice belly on them. So that's about where I want it. Let's go ahead and open all the way down to the wheel head. And then I'm gonna bring my fingers up, whatever I want the bottom thickness to be, in this case, a little more than a quarter inch, and I'll draw out towards myself to make a nice flat base. I've got my thumb resting against the bat to guide my depth. And I find that a really helpful tip. Um, if I just try to estimate all I'm pulling straight, I'm way up above it, I can't see what straight is and, and trying to feel horizontal is uh, a little bit difficult. I don't usually get it perfect. So if I can just drop my thumb in there and use it as a guide, um, just riding against the wheel, that's, um, that's helpful. All right, so we've got a drainage hole, we've got a flat bottom, we've got a thick donut of clay, it's time to pull up. Really wanna get it coming up relatively cylindrical to start with. So I'm using my left thumb on the outside to help keep everything coming up and in. It started to get a little dry uh, towards the top of that, so I, I let off, I'm gonna go ahead and re-wet everything. Um, it's really important to be aware of what's going on when you're pulling, especially bigger pieces, you know, if there's one side of the pot that's drier than the other and you're constantly coming around and catching on that, you're with every revolution pulling it farther and farther off center. So listen to what the clay is saying to you and respond accordingly. All right, we're gonna get a little more height this time. I wanna have the walls fairly even and somewhat thick. Because we're going to be cutting into it and making these pockets, you don't want it to be um, too flimsy. I know I still got a little bit of clay down there at the bottom, so I'm going to just make sure I get that up into play, and then we'll do some shaping. All right. Now we're pulling clay. Getting a little greedy. I feel like I'm making it a little bit thin. I just have such a hard time. We all know it's fun to pull this wall up and get more height. 
it's hard to control yourself. But if you want a, if you want a taller pot, just get more clay. Um, all right. I'm gonna dry out the inside because right now it's a soupy mess. I'm gonna use some ribs to dry everything out and compress everything. And then I'm gonna show you how to lay out the pattern for the holes in the side. So one pass with the ribs just to kind of get started on cleaning stuff up. Yellow rib on the inside, metal rib on the outside. Just compress and strengthen this wall. I'm trying to keep them directly across from each other so that I can squeeze the wall between the two ribs while I am scraping all this excess slurry off. While this form is vertical, is a great time to go ahead and use your wood knife and get that last little tiny flare of clay off of the, the base of the pot. I'm gonna come in and just trim that down, have it be a little bit rounded. You know, I'm not gonna be trimming a foot on a, on a strawberry jar, but I want that outside edge to be somewhat rounded and I'll come and kind of thumb the bottom when it's leather hard. But I also wanna sort of start that round over with the wood knife. So I actually changed the angle of the knife as I went down to create a little tiny bit of, of roundness down there. I'm gonna pull off this string of excess clay. It's not a ton. It's just the, the little shape of clay that's formed because the end of my fingertip is rounded. Okay, so time to put some shape into this thing. Take one more pass from the bottom, try to get some of the... That last little bit of slurry off of there. I'm gonna just start stretching. Stopping those rooms, ribs below the rim so that I maintain that nice thickness up there. And I'll be shamming that over, making sure it's nice and round. And now let's start expanding the form. Um, most planters, I want to have a taper that's pretty much like what I have right now, so that if it has a small tree in it or something, I can pull it out and it's not gonna get root bound. But with a strawberry jar, you're rarely using it for a tree. It would tend to dry out too fast. Um, it's more likely to be lots of individual plants, so I'm not constrained to have a, a widening taper in my pot. I can have something that recurves. And so I'm going to keep my outside rib up just below the rim to maintain that diameter, and I'm stretching out below that point with my inside rib. So my left hand is dropping down into the form right now, and my right hand is just staying up here by the rim. At this point, it's safe to leave, and I can bring my ribs back together and work on bellying this form out. Arrived at the bottom with my inside rib, so I come back up. Ribs aren't too covered in, in sludge, so I'm gonna just take a pass down and back up in one go. I'm gonna go ahead before I get to the top with my inside rib and reposition my outside rib to kind of protect that narrower diameter. I popped off a little bit fast, so I'm gonna to have to go back and do that more slowly so I stay rounder. You can see I introduced a little bit of wiggle from popping off too quick. So I'll just fix that by coming back, holding still. And this time I'll be better about it, slowly, slowly coming away. All right, so we're starting to get that nice, pleasant, rounded shape that I'm looking for. And the whole profile is gonna end up looking even wider than it is once I make the pockets, because the pockets are gonna take the visual line of the pot out wider. But I am gonna stretch it just a touch more. So again, sort of placing that 
outside rib just below the rim and then coming under it with my inside rib. All right, now I'm letting go at the top and we're gonna just balloon this out a little bit more. I've got my head down to the side so I can see the profile developing as I go. So you can always stretch it out more, it's hard to put it back. Let's take a final pass up towards the top and really refine this pretty somewhat ovoid shape. All right, now here I'm at the rim. I'm gonna take my time, really slowly release. All right, that's got a really pleasant plump shape. So it is time to just chamois this rim. And then I will torch the form just a little bit. Um, I don't wanna get it to leather hard. I wanna still be able to manipulate those pockets, but uh, I did push these walls a little thinner than maybe I should have, so I will Give myself a little bit of artificial um, stiffness here. All right, how nice. I'm gonna get my hands clean so I can torch this wall a little bit. And then I'm gonna show you one of the, the things that really changed, was a game changer for me on making strawberry jars. And that's creating some horizontal layout lines uh, just with a fingernail, um, something that's pretty subtle. Uh, you probably won't even see through the glaze, but I'll be able to see it as I'm making the pockets because I think they look a lot better if the pockets line up on um, the same horizontal. And I usually will stagger and do a second layer of pockets on the opposite points. Um, sometimes I do three and three, sometimes I do four and four. When I do four and four, it tends to pull the, the top of the form square, and I, I actually like that. So let's go ahead and stiffen things up a little bit. really going to be modifying this rim so I'm giving it a little extra juice here to hopefully make it hold its shape a little better. All right so we're not we're not pushing it to leather hard, but we're definitely giving ourselves a little bit more sturdiness. I saw a little something I wanted to change right down here at the foot. So I was going in with my finger because that'll reach to the, the juncture of the wall and the floor. I felt like there was kind of a flat right here in the middle. So I'm using my finger and kind of expanding that little area. This is actually something I normally would stick a rib inside to do, but while I was down there with my finger, I just went ahead and did it all. So I think you'll see that that's a, a fairly pleasing profile. I guess I can come in, not be lazy, and just make sure I like it with the rib. The advantage of the rib is it, it works a broader surface all at once. And it already has kind of a fair curve built in. So that's really nice. Okay, enough futzing around. If you've ever seen the guys up in uh, Gillsville throw, uh, they don't spend this much time on a pot. It's amazing to watch how quickly they'll turn out a, a five gallon churn or a big five gallon strawberry jar. Um, no wasted motion. It's really a beautiful thing to see. Now 
I guess after the first thousand, they get a little bit easier. Okay, here's that layout line trick. So sometimes I'll just take my pinky and turn it backwards so the fingernail is there and it gives me just something to make a little mark. And I'm gonna come down uh, in height wherever I, I really want this first row of pockets to be. And I think I want it to be slightly above the widest point. So I'm gonna come up right around in here and I'm gonna just spin the wheel and touch my fingernail. So it's a really subtle line. It may not even be visible to the camera, but it's definitely visible to my eye and gives me a horizontal reference for making the cuts that I need to make. And then I'm gonna come down, maybe to this widest point here. Uh, it's sort of a pleasant equal distance from the rim to my first cuts, and I'll go down that same distance to my next cuts. Just make that little reference line with my fingernail. That one's super subtle, but I think it's enough that I'll be able to see it. Okay. So I want to just feel what this is feeling like. I think that's about right. Uh, the torch gave it just a little bit of, um, between the torch and the rib, I feel like I can handle this without it all just being a goopy mess. So the next step is laying out where you want the cuts to be. And whenever I'm doing something that's got an even number of divisions, I take advantage of the fact that I've got bat pin holes on two opposite sides, 180 degrees apart. So those will be my first cuts. Uh, and then the question is how, how long of a cut do I wanna make? And so these pockets tend to expand a little bit when you, when you stretch them. So you don't need to make them too, too wide. And obviously the wider you make them, the more you're interrupting the integrity of the vertical wall. So I try to keep them pretty modest. An X-Acto knife works great. This also works great. The advantage of these thin bladed knives, either X-Acto knife or this Dolan knife, is that they don't displace a lot of clay. And so when you make the slit, the end of the slit, slit doesn't look any different from the beginning of the slit. And I like that um, it's also a disadvantage because there's not a lot of separation in the slit. So you need to go ahead and, and kind of open up the cut as soon as you're done making it so it doesn't stick back together. Um, I have found that the easiest way to make this happen is I don't hold the knife horizontally because if I do that, gravity kind of sticks it back down. I actually hold the knife tapered at an angle. And what that allows me to do is to come to the inside of the pot and push out on the lower side of the cut, and that will separate it from the, um, the upper part of the cut. I can even push in on the upper part of the cut. And that way they're tapered and they come apart and create a pocket for me to get in there with my finger and open up. So the next question is, do you just freehand it and follow the line visually? Or do you take advantage of the fact that this is on a wheel? And for me, my free handing is pretty crap. So I come in, um, I'm gonna take, I've got some scrap clay here, and I'm gonna mark with little dots of clay my, my east and my west. I've got my north and my south with the, um, with the bat pin holes. But I'm gonna just put a little blob of clay there, and I'm gonna stand up for a second and make sure it looks like I've got my, my cardinal directions correct. And the good thing about using a little blob of clay is you can just shift it if you need to. All right, so there it is, I'm all marked out. Now, you know, what other option do you have other than just eyeballing it? Well, your left hand can be free. You can place the knife in the cut and then just turn the wheel with your other hand. And that will, you know, if you hold this hand still and turn the wheel, you're gonna get a beautiful horizontal line. So let me show you how that works. I'm gonna grab the wheel over here. I'm going to stick the knife in on a diagonal, pierce the wall all the way, and then just turn this wheel. And I'm making about a two and a half inch cut, pulling the knife out. And I'll cut this top row. So I'm coming just a little bit, maybe an inch and a quarter beyond my Mark, sticking the knife in, and turning the wheel. Same thing again on this other mark. Make sure I'm spotting my mark. Put the knife in, turn the wheel. 
one more and we'll go ahead and create these pockets. Okay. So I'm checking. Those all look like they went on the line pretty well. The last one, I must have moved my hand a little bit. It got a little diagonal, but um, still better than I would have done freehand. So cleaning my hands again so that I can get them dry, and we're going to go ahead and separate these pockets open a little bit. We won't do anything more than just separating, but everything in its, in its proper time. So I'll be sort of keeping a finger against the upper part of the cut like this, and I'll reach underneath and press out and just separate the cut. So I'm gonna turn it so you can see how that looks. So it's gonna end up being bigger, but that's enough that we can get it started. So finger here, and then just separating that cut. And boy, figuring out that diagonal cut really made this a, a much more enjoyable process for me. Starting just a little bit of that stretch, just so I know that it's not gonna stick back together. In the old days, when people were making these things by the hundred, um, they would cut a hole out of the side and the, apparently the, the standard measurement for the holes in a strawberry jar was a Prince Albert um, tobacco tin. And I, I have one of those. It's kind of a cool little antique. I've actually never used it uh, to cut out because my actual preference is to have a slit uh, because there's no, there's no gap and it seems to me that it's going to hold the soil a little bit better. Um, at this point, I'm going to come back with my knife and make cuts on my lower line in the same way as on the, the first one. And I'm going to sort of split the distance between these upper cuts. So here is my line. I'm gonna to try to also have that two and a half inch or so pocket size. So I'm leaving some uninterrupted clay, uh, like a column coming up the side. So sticking that in and turning the wheel. Stopping before I get to the other um, pocket location. Here's the next one. Sticking it in, turning the wheel. Just making sure I'm on my line. There I am. Last cut. All right, and then same thing. Um, apparently the underside of my wheel is filthy because as I did that, I got my hand dirty again. So I'm just gonna clean it off, dry it off, and we're gonna separate these openings as well. Oh boy, and that's just separating so nicely. Finger aligned with the cut and then just kind of pushing out with my fingertips and sort of running my finger back and forth to open up that seam. Had a moment of like thinking that maybe I shouldn't have said anything because I haven't made it all the way around. But there we go. All eight cuts behaving just the way we want. So that's the beginning. I could walk away from it now. Maybe I should walk away from it now and give it a little bit of time, but I love a one take, uh, pottery video. So I'm going to just dampen my index finger and I'm going to stick it down in that crack and just kind of run my finger back and forth and stretch open each of those pockets. Um, one thing that this is really good for on a, from an educational standpoint is um, knowing if your wall is even. So when I look at my lower cuts, that wall thickness looks the same as the upper cut. So I guess I pass the, the even wall test. So wet finger. I'm going to try to come over here on the side a little bit so you can see sort of what I'm doing. 
I'm going to pick it, put it down into the hole and then just start sliding right and left. And this is almost like stretching out a spout. And I kind of bump my finger into the corners of the cut so that it rounds it. And then I'm going to take the back of my finger and kind of push the upper part of the cut inward. So I'm going to turn that so you can see how that turned out. It's a nice little spot for a little plant to get a, a root hold. So let's move on to the next one. I'm going to make sure there's no clay stuck to my finger and go in and do the same thing. Stretching that pocket out underneath. I'm going to use the back of my hand to stretch the upper part inward. And you know, you can stretch these more or less to taste. Um, I like them not too far out. I'll try to make them equally far out. That one was definitely longer, but you know, perfection is overrated. There we go. That one opened up nicely. Now, right now, these edges are, are pretty jagged and sharp, and you wouldn't really want that in the finished product. Um, you don't want to be putting your hand into a sharp space when you're digging and planting. So I will come back when this is leather hard with a chamois and just sort of round everything out and make it a little kinder and safer. All right, so the upper pockets are now open. And I think you can see what I mean about how, you know, the whole form now looks a lot fatter and wider than it did before. Um, and it'll look even more so when I do these lower cutouts. So here goes the next one. Your finger starts to get sticky do stop and get a little bit more water on there you don't want so much that it's like dripping down into the inside but um, you don't want to catch all right two more cuts Last one. Definitely get a little more water on there. This one looks like it could get a little bit more of a flare. All right, I think those all look pretty good. They're not all identical and that's gonna just have to be all right. If you really wanted to get there and, and measure, you could, um, but they're all kind of at the same height. So I'm turning it so you can see it's similar enough. You can see that the top has gone a little bit square-ish. It's not really that far out around. You can always come inside and just sort of give it a little tiny stretch and then slowly release and that'll often take care of any eccentricity. Um, but I'm going to call that good for now and uh, just let you know that definitely these edges are cut edges. They're quite sharp. So I'll come back with my handy dandy chamois and not obviously not with the wheel spinning and um, squeeze it out really well and just go over and compress all these edges. Uh, knowing the right time is important. Right now is not the right time. This wall is still just 
slightly stiffer than fresh. So I, if I get in there and start messing with it, I'll make a bigger mess. I want to wait till at least fully leather hard um, and maybe even toward hard leather hard before I still start dealing with those rough edges. Um, and then I'll just wire it off and dry it and it really doesn't need anything else uh, other than a, a, a good firing. Um, perhaps a, a cool glaze job and that'll be ready for the, the front porch and maybe some, maybe some strawberries, more likely some trailing succulent plants. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this long video and I hope that you have uh, success with those little tips uh, like your layout marks and angling your knife when you cut your pockets. Enjoy.